Hello, I'm Steve Folland with another Weird Week from Newslight TV. This week, big space, little space, massive face. We start with the unfolding story of a German man who set sail on the River Thames in an origami paper boat. Sounds like some kind of fable, doesn't it? It's actually art. Uh, this is Frank Bölter, an artist from Germany who made the boat on the banks of the Thames with the help of members of the public before, well, setting sail in it. Uh, the massive sheets of paper are actually reinforced with lightweight poles, but in he got and sailed it around Canary Wharf docks. Uh, it's fairly confident, it seems, in his contraption as well, since he was wearing a suit and carrying a newspaper. Unless, of course, that was going to be turned into a lifeboat, should he need it. You know how sweets you enjoyed as a child? They seemed massive then, didn't they? Your eyes full of wonder. But now as an adult, they, they seem tiny, and if anything, rather disappointing. Well, feast your eyes on this, because not anymore. This is the world's biggest gummy worm. It's a giant gummy worm. Huh? Come on, get your teeth into this. Well, you still have them. 128 times bigger than its smaller sibling, measuring 26 inches long and packing a whopping 4,000 calories. You can buy them online in a variety of flavours, though the 18 quid price tag is perhaps a little hard to swallow. And whilst you might have trouble fitting that massive worm in your mouth, at least you'll know that it will fit in your car when you buy it. Unless, of course, you own the world's smallest road legal car. This is just 56 inches long, 26 inches wide, and can do 37 miles per hour. Now, if you're thinking it looks familiar, that's because the chassis is a quad bike, but the body is actually taken from one of those Postman Pat children's rides. You know the ones where they sit in and rock back and forth, and you think, all right, come on, I've got shopping to do, but they seem to enjoy it for a little bit, and then they look bored. Seriously, look at it, though. Look closely. That's exactly what it is. I don't know whether you still need to put coins in in order to operate it, but this is perfectly road legal. It can be driven on the roads like any other car. Well, I say any other, you know, so long as you drive your other car like, like this with your, your knees up around you. Look. It's tricky being a cyclist. You don't want to wear a crash helmet because, you know, they don't look very cool, do they? But at the same time, you quite like the way that your head is shaped. You've got used to it over the years and you quite like the way the contents of your head are encased in that skull rather than deposited all over a road and perhaps a car's bonnet. What to do? Well, try the airbag collar. This comes from Sweden, where some designers were asked to come up with a helmet that wouldn't ruin your hairdo. Setting you back £260, you wear it like a scarf, but as soon as you hit something, you know, it inflates very quickly, 0.1 of a second, just like a normal airbag in your car, uh, it reacts. It has gyroscopes built in it, so it knows if you've gone off balance. If there's a sudden jolt, <laughs> Let's just hope you don't try and go up a curb quite viciously, or for that matter, fall into a prickly holly bush. <laughs> could be quite spectacular though. Uh, do you think they could adapt this and have one like in my jeans for when I... No, I'm just thinking, like, you know when you go down a bumpy road, yeah? <laughs> have it a go, cushion your buttocks. I'm just saying, if they, look, they've come up with the technology, they might as well. Ever made a paper plane? That was me making a paper plane. And then throwing it to try and see how far it would go. Of course you have, everybody's done it. How far do you think it would go, huh? Into space? I kid you not. Some space enthusiasts from the UK have actually done this. These are amazing gentlemen who made a rather impressive paper aircraft. It has a three foot wingspan and they launched it using a helium balloon. So, up it goes to the edge of space, and a small onboard camera then took a series of photos as it soared to 23 miles, that's 90,000 foot, above the Earth. Then, due to air pressure, pop, the air balloon went, and it glided back down to Earth. Quite amazingly, it landed 100 miles from where it took off. 
which is a little bit better than like eight meters, which I think was my record. But did they manage to hit the back of the French teacher's head with it? Huh? Huh? Who's wasting their time now? We're pretty much out of time, which is a shame. No time to show you a foot-shaped carrot. Plus, we've had to cut out the giant billboard made of cheese. Though we did cut it into very nice cubes and combine it with the giant pineapple story from a few weeks ago, so actually didn't go to waste. Also in there, this, the anti-iPhone, which you can buy actually, it's just a mobile phone, you can't even text from it. It does have an address book of course, but it's made of paper and hidden in the flap at the back. And no time to tell you about the world's loudest alarm clock, waking you up with a massive 90 decibels. That's like having a man sitting on your bedside table, ready and waiting to blow a vuvuzela directly in your ear at perhaps half past six in the morning. Man, that was a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it? But not as big as this mouthful. Look at that! Think how much weird weak rubbish he can fit in that. Uh, as well as a can of coke to refresh himself. <laughs> uh, but as I say, no time. Uh, you can however find out more about those oddities and many others for that matter at newslight.tv. I've been Steve Follin. That was your Weird Week. <laughs>